Here are the highlights of this week's news on Japan Today. I'm Nathan. And if you thought your snacks were shrinking, you should know that the cost of living in Japan is going up yet again. And this month, the prices of around 2,800 food and drink items will go up. According to Teikoku Data Bank, the price increases are mainly due to higher costs of imported raw materials, the weak yen, and higher transportation costs. Here are a few examples of items where the price is going up. Morinaga's Chocolate Ball and High Chew, Fujia's Milky and Country Man products, Nippon Ham and Ito Hams, Bacon, Sausages, Ham, and Frozen Foods, and Kikoman's Ketchup, Sauces, and Various Condiments and Spices. Other companies have opted for shrinkflation, reducing package and bottle sizes rather than raising prices. So now if you need a microscope to see some of your favorite snacks or drinks, now you know why. Apart from food and beverages though, prices of tissues, toilet paper, and paper stuff in general are also going up. So is the cost of delivery, such as Sagawa and Yamato increasing package delivery costs by up to 7%. Now not only are you paying more for your stuff, you're also paying more for the stuff to be delivered. Yay! A revised Japanese law to address outdated rules on paternity took effect this week, taking a more flexible approach to designating the legal father of a child born after a divorce and removing a 100-day remarriage ban for women. The new civil code states that if a child is born within 300 days of its mother's divorce, the previous husband will be the child's presumed father. But under the new provision, if a child is born at the point when the mother is remarried, the new husband will assume the legal paternity as an exception to the 300-day rule. The original civil code stated that a child born 200 or more days after a marriage or within 300 days of the date of divorce are presumed to have been conceived within the marriage. The first such change in the 126-year-old civil code provision came as many women have opted not to submit notification of the birth of a new child with a new partner, hoping to avoid having their former husband recognized as the legal father of the child. But leaving children off their family registry by failing to report their births to local governments puts them at a disadvantage in receiving a wide range of public and private services in Japan. The rule was intended to protect the child's welfare by swiftly determining the child's legal father. But the ban has been criticized as discriminatory for only applying to women and has become unnecessary with the latest change. If you can drive a bus, taxi, or truck, you might be eligible for one of Japan's new skilled foreign worker visas. The government has added four new industries to its foreign skilled worker visa program as it moves to address the nation's labor shortage by giving more people access to stays of up to five years. The decision brings the number of eligible industries under the specified skilled worker number one visa to 16. This expansion, covering road and railway transportation and forestry, is the first since the system was introduced in 2019. The government plans to accept up to 820,000 foreigners under the Skilled Worker Visa program in the next five years, starting from this month. Skilled foreigners will be accepted as drivers of buses, taxis, and trucks by companies that have been certified by the Transport Ministry. But what does the government mean by skilled? Applicants will be required to pass the N3 level of the Japanese language proficiency test, which is around a medium level of Japanese. I hope and assume they will also need a driver's license. The latest reform comes as the government has submitted bills to replace the controversial foreign trainee program with a new system focused on developing skills and protecting workers' rights. There have been problems with the previous trainee program where some participants abandoned their employment due to workplace abuse such as unpaid wages or harassment. This new program will allow trainees to switch companies in the same industry under certain conditions and gain skills needed for transitioning to the aforementioned specified skilled worker number one visa. While we're on the subject of driving, on Monday, Japan began allowing ride hailing services to operate in four locations, including of course the top tourist spots of Tokyo and Kyoto. If you don't know, most ride hailing apps in Japan up until now are basically just fancy ways to call a taxi. But now, this partial ban lift was initiated in order to address a nationwide shortage of taxi drivers. 
Ride hailing services will allow drivers with a standard license to offer taxi services on specified days and hours using their own private vehicle provided they're under the management of a local taxi company. Under the ride hailing system, drivers will be required to renew their permit every two years and can only accept cashless payments. In addition to Tokyo and Kyoto, services will be offered on Fridays and weekends for the Nagoya region and Yokohama. Which means if you want a ride chair on Wednesday in Nagoya, oops, <laughs> take a taxi. The operating hours and number of vehicles dispatched are up apparently determined based on user data collected by ride hailing apps, according to the Ministry of Land, Infrastructure, Transport, and Tourism. So many things. Services will also continue to expand to other areas of Japan, such as Hiroshima and Sapporo, from as early as May. As for a full ban lift on ride hailing services though, it is being discussed. Johnny's and Associates, now renamed to Smile Up, is Japan's biggest and most successful boy band agency. And they've just admitted that two more of their employees have committed sexual abuse. Months after it said its late founder had abused young aspiring stars. Quoting them, the two employees of Johnny and Associates were firmly dealt with last year, they said. Of course, they didn't specify what firmly dealt with means. Johnny Kitagawa, who founded the business and built J-pop megagroups across Asia, died in 2019 at the age of 87. But his legacy was tarnished last year by discoveries about his decades-long sexual abuse of young boys seeking stardom under his mentorship. In August, a report published by a task force investigating Kitagawa's crime said that, in addition to him, other staff members at the agency were confirmed to have committed sexual abuse but no details were provided on the number of employees involved. Japanese health authorities have searched two factories belonging to Kobayashi Pharmaceutical after the company reported deaths possibly tied to their dietary supplements. The inspections in Kinokawa, Wakayama, and Osaka expanded the investigation into the drug maker's use of Benny Koji, which is also known as red yeast materials. The company said it found what appeared to be a potentially toxic puberilic acid that could have been produced by blue mold penicillium in the Benny Koji produced between last April and October at the Osaka factory. As of Tuesday, 157 people had been hospitalized and five had died of kidney ailments after taking the supplements, which were marketed as helping lower cholesterol levels. The factory in Osaka was closed in December and production shifted to the factory in Kinokawa. Kobayashi began recalling products on March 22nd after the reports of kidney ailments. Kobayashi sells Benny Koji wholesale to 52 companies and even exports the product overseas. TV Asahi reported that some 1,800 food makers could be affected. Investigations are still being held across the supply chain and the government has criticized the company for taking two months to announce the health impacts of its products. And it's time for the weird and wonderful news brought to you by Gaijin Pot Study. Do you want to study Japanese in Japan? I have this place for you. Gaijin Pot Study will help you pick a school, get a visa, and come to Japan to make your dreams reality. So sign up for Gaijin Pot Study, brought to you by the weird and wonderful news. Reverse that. Weird. <laughs> WONDERFUL NEWS! Here's an inspirational story. Swimmer and leukemia survivor Rikako Ike will compete for Japan at the 100 meters butterfly at the Paris Olympics. In 2018, Ike was named MVP of the Asian Games after claiming six golds and two silvers and was expected to be one of the stars of the Tokyo Olympics. But in early 2019, a few months after those triumphs, she was diagnosed with leukemia and spent around 10 months in the hospital. She returned to competition in August 2020 and completed an incredible comeback by winning not only the 100 meters freestyle, but also the 100 meters butterfly at the 2021 Olympic trials but her times were not fast enough to qualify for the individual events at her home Olympics. Now 23, Ike secured her place in the 100 meters butterfly at Japan's trials last week by 0.01 of a second and will be heading to Paris in a remarkable comeback. 
Best of luck. Japan's plummeting birth rate has led one diaper manufacturer to stop making diapers for babies and instead ramp up production for adults. OG Holdings will end domestic output of infant diapers in September after production dropped from a 2001 peak of around 700 million annually to just 400 million today. A spokesman for OG Holdings said the company will boost production of sanitary items for adults in Japan, anticipating their use mainly in facilities like nursing homes. Japan has the world's oldest population, after Monaco, let's go, we're number two, not number one, baby. And the market for adult diapers is expected to grow domestically, so get those baby adult diaper stonks. Adult diaper production is ramping up, so get ready for entire aisles of your local supermarket to be full of the things, cause even before ramping up, there's already a whole section at my local drugstore. For the past few months, the Japanese government has been making all sorts of plans on what to do if Donald Trump retakes the White House in the November US presidential election. Their latest move is to enlist the help of Sunao Tako, who was Shinzo Abe's interpreter, helping him to understand Donald Trump as they navigated contentious issues while riding around in golf carts. Japanese officials are reportedly preparing to either deploy the Harvard-educated Tako from his current posting at Japan's embassy in Beijing to Japan's embassy in Washington, or just have him do the job from Tokyo. Tako interpreted for Abe in dozens of meetings with Trump between 2016 and 2020, including at Trump Tower, in the presidential car nicknamed The Beast, at a sumo match in Japan, and during the pair's many golf outings. Ahead of those meetings, Tako spent hours studying footage of Trump, and more importantly, the rules of golf. Trump's former deputy national security advisor, Matt Pottinger, wrote in a Wall Street Journal op-ed that Tako rendered the Japanese leader's upbeat staccato into resonant English, even while clinging to the back of a racing golf cart. Man, Matt is really hyping this dude up. After one of his golf outings with Abe in 2019, Trump jokingly referred to Taco as junior prime minister. This might have been the time, the highly publicized time, might I add, when Abe fell into a sand bunker and Trump just kept going on with his golf game like nothing happened. Spectacular. Chad. Based. <laughs> Fans said their goodbyes on March 31st to Yokohama's life-size moving Gundam model as the exhibition ended its run. The 18-meter tall giant robot has fascinated fans from all around the world by stepping out of its dock and making various poses since the exhibition at the Gundam factory Yokohama started in December 2020. In fact, I actually visited there early this year and... It was pretty cool to see the giant robot pop a squat. The spectacle began as part of a project to commemorate the 40th anniversary of the first showing of the television series, which started in 1979. That original show, by the way, it does actually hold up. I highly recommend it if you're interested. The exhibition featuring the model, which has 36 movable parts, was extended twice beyond the initial closing date of March 2022, due to fans' requests. Yoshiyuki Tomino, chief director of the anime series Mobile Suit Gundam, thanked fans at the closing event. During its run, over 1.75 million people visited the site on Yamashita Pier, paying homage to the magnificent mech. Japan's imperial family has made its Instagram debut on April 1st with the username kunaicho underscore jp, and already they've gained 500,000 followers. Their next goal is to pass Taylor Swift. That's a joke. Actually, it's all in hopes to shake off the family's reclusive image and reach out to the youngsters on social media. The Imperial Household Agency, a government agency in charge of the family's affairs, posted 60 photos and five videos showing Emperor Naruhito and Empress Masako's public appearances over the past three months. The agency said they wanted the public to have a better understanding of the family's official duties and that Instagram was chosen because of its popularity among youth. So far, the images are limited to the family's official duties and do not include private or candid moments. But the agency said it was considering adding activities of other royal members. The Japanese imperial family's social media debut comes 15 years behind Britain's royal family joined Twitter in 2009, so they have a lot of catch up to do with public showing. Maybe they can collab with Netflix and make a new season of The Crown, Japan style. Last year, the agency set up a team of experts to study the effects of using social media on the imperial family. So let's see where this leads. 
And hey, if Netflix don't want to collab, I'm game. Maybe a Yu-Gi-Oh! unboxing live stream? They totally play Yu-Gi-Oh! right? <laughs> right? <laughs> Speaking of Yu-Gi-Oh! For two weeks in a row now, miraculously, we have another Yu-Gi-Oh! story. For the uninitiated, Yu-Gi-Oh! is a popular trading card game from Japan, which is played worldwide and also has popular video games and anime series. This coming September, Seattle, Washington will be the host city for the Yu-Gi-Oh! World Championship, which, by the way, is already controversial on its own due to Konami, the company that makes Yu-Gi-Oh!, deciding that only the qualifying players for the World Championships will be able to attend the event will not be open to the general public as it has been in the past. But before the best players of this trading card game make their way to Seattle, Washington, they'll have to focus on defeating their rival duelists in preliminary tournaments in their home countries or regions. However, for those aiming to win the Yu-Gi-Oh! Japan Championship this year, the competition pool isn't really every player in Japan, as the rules expressly prohibit foreign residents in Japan from taking part in the tournament. Most of the clauses seem pretty standard. Proof of identity is required, so you can't have a ringer play for you. But where things get surprising is where the Yu-Gi-Oh! Japan Championship 2024 entry requirements state. Entry is restricted to people of Japanese nationality, which means foreign residents of Japan are banned. Citizens of foreign countries who are legally living in Japan, maybe for work or school or being married, cannot participate in the competition regardless of how long they've lived in Japan, even if they're a permanent resident. Now, this is pure speculation, but just to add some additional context, Yu-Gi-Oh! is a very, very complicated game. One aspect in which it's complicated is that there's two versions of the game, the OCG, the official card game in Asia, and the TCG, the trading card game in the Western world. Now in the OCG, there are some English cards sold in some countries, but in Japan, only Japanese cards are eligible, meaning anyone playing here would need to play with Japanese cards. It's also a game that requires you to basically be Albert Einstein and able to comprehend the most complicated information at light speed. So maybe they're worried about language barrier taking up too much time or being difficult to arbitrate. And I say arbitrate because Yu-Gi-Oh! is a game that has judges who have to take tests to qualify, who are available at tournaments to mediate rules issues. I know for myself personally, I have trouble understanding half the cards in English, so I am definitely not trying in Japanese. Regardless of all of this though, I highly doubt Konami will ever clarify their reasoning, so let's see what happens with these tournaments. For now, maybe we can have another Yu-Gi-Oh! story three weeks in a row. And that's all for this week's news on Japan Today. So come back next week for more news. See you then. I'm gonna go back to practicing my Yu-Gi-Oh combos. Normal summon Ash, get Poplar from the deck, use Poplar to get Divine Temple. You Divine Temple, a place Oak in the spell trap. I failed to mention, but the OCG is also a completely different format from the TCG. Very important because in the T OCG, they can also use Maxi, and Maxi allows you to draw cards anytime your opponent special summons, so it's completely different from the TCG. But on Master Duel, you can't play Maxi, so they're probably worried about the format in addition to the language, so there's a lot of things going on. <laughs>